My name is Dong Sheng Kei. I'm a professor at uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, New York. My research is primarily focusing on aging and aging related diseases. Um, why do I have such a, a strong interest in aging? I think apparently there are a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, aging is um, a very basic uh, factor and a background for the development of many diseases. Uh, for example, neurodegenerative diseases, cancers, uh, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular diseases. So all those diseases are uh, increasingly prevalent and uh, they increase over age. So the aging is important to, uh, um, in order to understand the development of diseases and perhaps make some solution for those diseases. So in, now, in my lab, um, we have uh, several different approaches to understand the aging development. And over the last uh, some years of research, we have uh, begun to appreciate the, the brain, especially uh, a structure in the brain called the hypothalamus. Uh, the hypothalamus is an uh, endocrine organ in the brain. And this organ is important for many basic uh, functions of life. Uh, as uh, the research has already appreciated. Um, but one thing that seems like it's still uh, not addressed uh, is whether the hypothalamus is critical for aging development. And we have developed some approaches and obt obtained some evidence suggesting that the hypothalamus dysfunction has a causative role in aging development. But based on what we have learned, we figure out there's a, a molecular program in the hypothalamus uh, which is uh, responsible for the aging development. And this molecular program is related, related to uh, inflammation uh, induction in the hypothalamus. Uh, this pathway, uh, there's a specific name called nf kappa b pathway. And normally this pathway uh, is not active uh, in a young condition, in a young age. But when animals, for example, uh, get older, the, this pathway is turned on and it triggers an uh, inflammatory response uh, chronically and leading to a number of dysfunctions of the hypothalamus, um, ranging from the dysregulation of energy balance, the cardiovascular uh, dysregulation, to even the aging development. And in our um, animal studies, we used uh, different methods, for example, the genetic models and the pharmacological models to activate or inhibit this pathway, specifically in hypothalamus. And we observed when this pathway was activated, it was sufficient to induce certain agent uh, phenomenon or agent-related um, disorders, and animals uh, live shorter. On the other hand, when this pathway is inhibited, whether genetically or pharmacologically, uh, these this, this animals uh, benefit from delaying the agent-related um, diseases development and uh, increase of lifespan or uh, the longevity. Um, we also figure out some potential mechanisms downstream of this uh, inflammatory program. Uh, for example, we linked the induction of inflammation to a defect of a, a control system, which is normally known for reproductive regulation. And we believe this uh, reproductive regula regulatory pathway has a, a, another independent role in an agent uh, development or agent control. So when inflammation is induced, this uh, reproductive regulatory pathway um, is changed and actually has some um, impact or influence on the systemic agent. And we uh, were also able to uh, manipulate these reproductive regulatory uh, molecules in hypothalamus. And uh, our initial observations have pointed out they can be used uh, to uh, reduce certain agent-related disorders, at least in animals. Um, I think uh, this is, uh, um, in our lab, it's just the beginning stage to understanding it's a very complicated, uh, comprehensive question, and there, there are much more to be learned, to be, and there are many questions to be asked and to be answered. And I'm very excited about the, this uh, great opportunity, and uh, uh, we'll continue uh, our effort in this direction, and hopefully we can um, eventually develop some solutions um, for aging diseases.